at first I had a, a 99 Dodge and in 2002 I bought a Lance 921. Well, it was a little heavy for the truck, so then in 05 I bought a 3500. And that was a nice, well-balanced rig. But then I wanted a bigger camper and then I didn't have enough truck. So I decided to get the, uh, the Ram 5500 so I could have a camper made out of cast iron if I wanted to. <laughs> and at the time, <clears throat> I owned industrial design and fabrication and we built custom uh, industrial machinery. So it wasn't too much of a stretch, even though I've never designed a, a custom storage bed, it wasn't too much of a stretch to, to do that. But I use SolidWorks because it's a, it's a pretty cool program because you can do cross sections, you can spin things around, you can get things in odd positions and measure, measure clearances. Um, the downside is it's only as accurate as the way you draw it. If you give it a bad dimension, then it's not going to work. But it enables you to see uh, potential problems uh, or ways that you can change and improve it. For instance, on the mounting of the spare tire, I originally had it on the passenger side with the filler cap on the uh, driver's side. But I thought, well, why take up all that space when I could just take the, uh, in, the, in the program, I could just take the mount that I had for the spare tire, swing it around, <clears throat> put it on the other side, and then put the filler in the middle of it. In this particular case, I didn't bother putting a, a box there, an enclosure. Uh, you could, but I, I chose not to do that, just to save uh, the, the money of the, uh, not having to make an enclosure. As any truck camper knows, there's no such thing as too much storage space. So in the right front box, I have a, uh, an inflatable kayak. In the center box above the wheel on the passenger side, I have, that's where I put all my tools. And that was a handy place when I was uh, still going to the track because it was under the awning and I could pull the car under the awning and work on it. The left box uh, on the driver's side, the front box on the driver's side, I used to put an electric bike under there. Uh, and then the box over the uh, wheel on the driver's side is where I put all the camper and truck stuff. Until recently, I was uh, an in-car instructor for the BMW and Porsche clubs in the southeast. Uh, my track car is a 1984 BMW. Uh, it has an M3 motor and transmission and differential. I towed it with the, uh, the 5500 and it, uh, I would stay, I would camp at the track, which was really nice. Uh, the reason I got out of it is because uh, I was at St. Louis and it was a really cold morning and I got a little too anxious and spun on cold tires and backed into a tire wall, shortened it up by about a foot and a half, and I haven't taken the time to stretch it back out yet. So. <laughs> we made the bed, uh, the basic frame out of steel we happened to have in the, the shop some leftover three inch by five inch uh, rectangular tubing and I used that as the base. I used the three inch in the vertical dimension and the five inch horizontally to try and get the camper as low as possible. Um, and that also made the bed torsionally very stiff, which was one of my concerns because I wanted to induce as little torsion into the camper as possible because the frame of the truck is made out of channel it's 50,000 psi steel, which means that it can twist quite a lot. So the bed, the frame is of the storage bed, is mounted to where it can, it's attached to the back end of the, of the frame, and it's spring-loaded uh, against stops in the front. So the frame can twist separately from the frame of the truck. The <coughs> aluminum boxes were made at a local uh, company, the uh, fabrication company, and then I took them and assembled everything and then had a local body shop do the painting. The whole process from beginning to end took about eight weeks. When I first <coughs> assembled uh, the rig and took it for my first test drive, I was tickled with the way it performed. It was nice and tight, not a lot of sway. If there was a slalom course for truck campers, I'm sure I could have taken it. But then I started noticing that there's a lot of vibration and things started falling apart. One time I went to dump the tanks and the handle fell off in my hand. Another time I opened the door and here's the handle for the, for the vent fan laying in the floor. So 
I wanted to soften it up a little bit, so I put a Kelderman uh, airbag suspension on the front, and on the back I got some uh, Firestone airbags and did a custom installation. I took off the contact overloads and in order to make space to put the Firestones in. And it gives a <coughs> it smoothed up the ride quite a little bit. But then well, after I did that, it introduced the sway that it didn't have before. So then I had to put a sway bar in the back. So you kind of chase your tail on some of this stuff until you get it kind of dialed in. The sway bar is a Roadmaster. And I think the largest one they had at the time was about an inch and a half in diameter. Uh, and it made a huge difference on the handling. It got rid of a lot of the sway. There are a few things <clears throat> I would do differently if I had it to do over again. As I mentioned, I mounted the frame, the basic frame for the uh, utility box, storage box, uh, in the back of the frame of the truck, because that's where the bumper uh, bumper is, and I wanted that's where the hitch is to tow uh, the trailer. And then on the front, I made it to where the frame of the truck could twist and not necessarily uh, induce that twist into the frame of the uh, bed. But what that does, it over rough terrain, it induces more sway into the camper. If I had mounted the uh, frame of the bed at the front toward the middle of the, uh, of the truck, as the frame twists, it wouldn't have twist, uh, moved the camper as much. After the bed was assembled, <clears throat> and I was thinking about the uh, motion of the uh, camper, uh, I built a little model. Again, this is after I had everything constructed. I built a little model and uh, just to prove to myself that that's what it would do and mounting it to the front would be better. I kind of wished I had put more space around the uh, wheel well uh, under the storage boxes because I thought it would be nice to uh, put on larger tires for uh, off-roading and perhaps even, I guess you call them super singles, one large tire instead of a dually in the back. It's my understanding that uh, there's some beaches that won't allow duallys uh, to go on them. The reason I chose a, uh, a truck and camper, uh, actually several reasons. My father had one when I was young and I was kind of brought up with truck campers. But <clears throat> the main reason I bought a truck and a camper is so I could tow a trailer. And I did that for many years. But I also really enjoy, um, with the Eagle Cap, it's got a large back window and a couch. And I've spent many, many pleasant evenings with my legs up on the couch, lean back against the side. When you go places that you've never been before and see people that you've never seen before and eat at restaurants that you've never been before, you're more aware of life. In your daily routine, normally, you do the same things over and over again. And <clears throat> you forget, you become just numb to what's going on around you, you know. When you're seeing things, especially really spectacular stuff like the Rockies or, or the Grand Canyon or the really big stuff, it, it, it's just the wow factor of being able to do all that, you know, is, uh, <clears throat> is really amazing. And I, uh, I plan on continuing to do that for a long, long time.